Hello? Oh, good, we're on. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to be so loud. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to have you. Welcome to Worship Together. We're so glad you're here. Welcome whoever's online watching this right now. We welcome you as well. And I just want to remind you of our safety guidelines. Um, just take a look at those. I'm sure you've all seen them before, but I'm supposed to say this. And then also, if you um, want to give the t uh, tithe and offering, we're not taking a collection anymore. There are offering boxes and all along the walls in the back. And then also, what was the final thing I was supposed to? Oh, we're also doing a check-in. There's an app now. It's our church check-in. Instead of passing the book, we're going to start checking in on an app. So you just upload this app to your phone, and you can tell us that you, were, that you attended this service. We'd love if you did that. Thank you. And so the reason I'm up here being the host today and not Sarah, can you guys recognize her? Isn't she an adorable child? is because Sarah is on vacation for two weeks, and then she is gone for another six weeks after that doing a sabbatical. And um, so this weekend, we got to honor Sarah, and we wanted to honor Sarah here in this service. So if you guys would all stand up right now, we're going to actually video us honoring her and send it to her. Um, Kennedy, where are you? Come on up so you can video it from the front. So we're all going to clap super loud, and we're going to say, we honor you and hold you in high regard. Can you think you guys got that? And then we're going to send it to Sarah just to let her know that we did it in this service too. So we're going to try to be, um, even though we're small, we're going to try to be mighty um, so that we can honor her well, because she has served this church for 15 years. She's been in ministry for like 23 years, but she's done 15 of children's ministry at, at this church, and we are so thankful for Sarah and all her hard work. So here we go. One, two, three. Big clap. hold you in high regard. We love you, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so next I'm going to introduce, uh, next I think Tiffany's going to do, oh, <laughs> I'm still learning how to be the host. <laughs> um, we had five kids come to Jesus at VBS last week, and that is something else to cheer for. Woohoo! And super exciting, just today, a little girl gave her heart to Jesus. Um, uh, they were doing the VBS this week, and um, Molly's, it was one of Molly's neighbors gave her heart to Jesus today. So we are so excited that our VBS, going digital out into people's homes and people's neighborhoods, is bringing kids to Jesus. That's something to celebrate, and we know that heaven is celebrating with us for that. Next, I think we're going to do some worship. All right. So you guys can stay standing for worship if you'd like. Sure. Last week, and Miss Tiffany is still learning the motions to this, but is there anyone else that feels really confident in the motions? We trust. We trust. It's okay if you don't. If you suddenly feel confident, come on up and help Miss Shar and I. Yep. All right. Can we see it back there? <laughs> nope. <laughs>
faces were wide open eyes We're looking ahead for the next big surprise Whoa, 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 whoa. We trust, we trust, we trust in you Jesus You're all, you're all, you're all that we need Your power will pull us through We're trusting in you Spaces for wide open eyes We're looking ahead for the next big surprise Oh, 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 oh. We trust, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus You're all that we need Your power will pull us through We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you You give us hope one more song, so stay standing, okay? This is a song that came out of Hawaii after missionaries had gone there and taught the people about Jesus. And in Hawaii, this is at a time where they still paddled in their outrigged canoes. So I want you just to learn this part with me, okay? So we're going to go this direction, and you're going to pretend that you're paddling on your right side, and you're going to say, fewa, fewa. Can you say that? Fewa, fewa, ha, tu, na. Can you say that? Fewer, fewer, ha, tu, na. And then all of a sudden they realize that's not the direction you're supposed to go if you love Jesus. So we say, switch. Everyone switch directions. Now we're paddling on our left side. And now say, fewer, fewer, ki, wa, ho. Okay? So first say, fewer, fewer, ha, tu, na. Can you say it? Hatuna and then fewa fewa ki wa ho. Fewa fewa ki wa ho. You'll catch on. The fewa fewa hatuna means we're going in this direction. It's not the right direction. Hatuna means like you're running from the devil and you're running toward Jesus. Okay, the rest of the song is in English and it's pretty easy. We're going to do a couple simple motions, okay? So first goes like this. Sing a little song for Jesus, you'll be right. Sing a little song for Jesus, you'll be right. Get ready to paddle. Fewer, fewer, ha, tuna, switch. Fewer, fewer, kiwa, ho. Sing a little song for Jesus, you'll be right. Pray a little prayer for Jesus, you'll be right. Pray a little prayer for Jesus, you'll be right. Paddle. Fewa, fewa, ha, tuna, switch. Fewa, fewa, kiwa, ho. Pray a little prayer for Jesus, you'll be right. Last part is shout amen for Jesus, you'll be right. Shout amen. For Jesus, you'll be right. Fewer, fewer, 
Ha tu na switch, fewa, fewa, kiwa ho. Shout amen for Jesus, you'll be right. What your imagination has to do is think of there being shell bracelets that were shaking as they did that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say a quick prayer and then you can have a seat. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name. We are families together. We are a big family together when we stand in the name of Jesus. What a glorious thing. We pray tonight, Father, you'd give us ears to hear and hearts that are ready to obey as we learn about justice. And we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so while Miss Tiffany gets her breath back from that little jig, there are three families here, and I'm really hoping that all three of you will participate. We're going to do a little experiment. So if you're willing, we're going to have one family standing right here, one family right here, and one family over in this aisle. And we're going to do just a very quick race from where these chairs are to the last chair. And each aisle is pretty much equal in its length. Who's willing to do that? The whole family can come up. But each family is going to be given a different circumstance in which they race this, OK? So this, what's your guys' last name? The McCullas. OK, you guys are going to race this aisle hopping. OK, you can only hop on one foot when I say go. What's your guys' last name? Gretch. What's it? Gretch. Gretch. OK. You guys, one of you has legs that do not work. So it's up to you how you decide, but you have to get the whole family to the end in your race. OK? All right, this family, two of you, what's your last name? The Menkees. Two of you are blind. OK, so the one seeing person has to help. Everyone has to get to the end for us to determine who has won the race. You guys ready? So you can turn and face the back. And when I say ready, when I say go, you'll go, OK? So ready, set, go. <laughs> <laughs> Good hopping, good hopping, good leading the blind. <gasps> wow. Okay, I think that we had winners in this family, the Reg family. Good, give everyone a hand. Come on back. Shar, do you have your microphone? Okay. So as you make your way back, I want you to think about... Hello? Yeah. What was fair or unfair in this race? You guys can have a seat. Go ahead and find your seats. And Shar will come to you when you have an answer for me. Raise your hand. But what was fair or maybe unfair about this race? Luke, you ready? You ready? You want to tell? What, what, what was unfair or fair? What was fair is that we all had like a disability. OK. I like that you could see that. Good. What about maybe what was something that may have been unfair? All right. This is something that's fair. Annie. This is what was fair. We all started at the same distance. Oh, okay. We all had the same. Yeah. Good thinkers, the same distance. What else? Anyone else? What was unfair is that when you have disabilities, there's some. Um, Good disabilities, and there's some bad, and there's some that's better than the others. Yeah, some are not as hard on you to perform a task as other disabilities. Good insight. Do you all know that our own Pastor Shar is legally blind? Yep. And do you know that when she first got hired here, she would talk to people. She can see you better from the side of her eyes. But some people, if they were down the hall and they, and they waved at her, she couldn't see them. She wouldn't wave back. And in the beginning of her job, families would come to me and say, that Miss Shar is not a very nice person. And I would say, what do you mean? She's one of my best friends. Well, when I wave at her, she doesn't wave back. And then I said, Shar, we have to get you on stage so you can tell people you can't see when they're waving at you. 
So that's a disability that we, once we learn about it, we can treat her with a little more fairness, can't we? Yeah, come say hi to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You got to be real close to her. Or say, Shar, it's so-and-so waving. That's helpful, too. But something that's lovely about Shar is that every time she sees me, she thinks that I've lost weight. <laughs> Anyone else, maybe something else that maybe made you think that it was unfair. What good things did we see happening with each family trying to get to the finish line? Oh, that's a good one. Do you want to say something? No? Okay, that's okay. Who in the Wretch family couldn't walk? Aha, uh -huh, the little oh. one. And how did you get to the end of the race? Yeah, they helped you. <laughs> you had helpers carry you. Can anyone think of a story in the Bible where there was help for somebody who had a major disability? Go ahead, Mr. Menke. I think of the, I think of the men who lowered their friend down in the hut to see Jesus because they couldn't get in any other way and they wanted him to be healed. Yes, the friend who couldn't walk, he was on a mat, and his friends cared so much about him, they dug a hole in the roof and lowered him down because there were too many people outside of the building for them to get him past, and they brought him to Jesus. And so I love that. I saw, thank you, Char, you can have a seat. I loved seeing how you guys chose to work together to get your weakest member to the end of the line. We are running a race. We all want to get to the finish line. And justice, which is something that God is, is us choosing to help everyone, no matter what they look like, what abilities or disabilities they have, finish the race. We are going to um, talk about two words in particular that you may have heard maybe in the news or on the TV. It's the word injustice and the word privilege. Have you guys heard these words at all? Injustice. They're kind of big words. In fact, I don't even, I didn't even quite know how to define them. Injustice and privilege. So the best way to define them is to look at what we really want to live into. And what does God have to say about injustice and privilege? Well, God likes to talk about justice. And just so you all know, if we end up getting more families here and hello, face or whoever is watching live, um, I am going to try to have an order to these talks that kind of stays the same all the time. So we, we will worship and we will have some kind of an activity that helps us focus on the lesson. And then say this with me. The first thing that we want to do is look at God and rejoice. Can you say that with me? Look at God and rejoice. Say it one more time. Look at God and rejoice. Yep. And then we are going to look at us and repent. Okay, say that with me. Look at us and repent. One more time. Look at us and repent. And the third thing that we will do in every talk is look at Jesus and respond. Say it with me. Look at Jesus and respond. One more time. Look at Jesus and respond. Okay, so we're going to start with looking at God so we can rejoice. Because it's not an easy thing to talk about injustice in our world. It could make us feel heavy and sad and guilty. So we want to start with the word, with the truth, with a good God. I'm going to pray. Father, we need your help. We need your help in understanding pretty big concepts, justice and injustice, privilege and fairness and equity. And we don't want it to be man's opinion. We want it to be founded on your truth. So we ask for help and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So one of the easiest ways to define justice comes out of several passages in scripture. Any of you guys bring a Bible? Well, I will go ahead and read. These are from the Psalms, okay? And I want you little ones, you children, to be listening closely to what it tells us about God and justice. Psalm 96, verse 10 says, Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Do you think we're talking about this kind of reign? 
In sign language, it's like this, like horse reins that control a horse. Okay, the Lord reigns. That means he's in control. He has the power over everything. So that's a good thing to rejoice about, right? God is in control. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the people with righteousness. So what does this tell us about God? What did you hear? You can shout it out. Yes. He will judge the world with righteousness. Yes. In Hebrew, that word righteousness, that's kind of a big word too, but it really just means straight and right, not crooked and bent. God does things right. He, he's not mean. He's not unfair. He does things right. Okay, we're going to read another psalm. This is Psalm 99, verses 1 through 5. Listen to what we learn about God. The Lord reigns. There it is again. He's in control. Let the peoples tremble. He dwells between the cherubim, these mighty angels. The Lord is great. He is high above all the peoples. So we need to praise his great and awesome name for he is holy. He is strong and he loves justice. He has established equity. Now, equity doesn't mean everything is equal. Equity means everybody has gotten what they need to live their best life, okay? So he establishes equity. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship him for he is holy. He executes justice and righteousness. Okay, so are we hearing a theme here? What does the Lord love? He loves justice. He loves rightness, fairness, giving people what they deserve. Sometimes it's punishment, sometimes it's reward, but all people who have been made in his image deserve love. All right, we're going to look at another passage, Psalm 146. We're still looking at God so that we can rejoice. Getting an idea of what is justice based on who he is. Psalm 146, 5 through 9. Happy is the one who has the God of Jacob to help him, whose hope is in the Lord his God. He's the one who made heaven and earth. He made the sea and everything in it. He is truthful forever, and he executes justice for the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry and he gives freedom to the prisoners. He opens the eyes of the blind. He raises those up who have been bowed down. He loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He takes care of the children who have no fathers, and he takes care of widows. But the way of the wicked, he'll turn upside down. What did you hear about God in that? There's a lot of different things we heard about God in that. What do you remember? Grown-ups can talk to. Go ahead. <laughs> I like that you remember that, you know, because it's good to know that God's going to take care of each person. He's going to give everybody a chance to not be wicked. But if they don't want to take his grace and change, he's going to punish them. And sometimes getting turned upside down is enough to turn somebody around. <laughs> What else did we hear about God? Yes. He helps everyone. He helps everyone. I, that's the great way to sum it up. Because who are some of the people he helps that we heard in this passage? Widows. The oppressed. Mm -hmm. That's people who maybe are getting beat up or who are being treated unfairly or who feel like they've got a heavy, sad spirit on them. He takes care of those people. All right, we're going to do one more passage. This is in Jeremiah chapter 9. I love this passage. It's one of my favorites. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise man... 
boast in his wisdom. I'm so smart. No one is smarter than me. God says, we don't want to go there. Even the smartest man is a fool compared to how smart our God is. Don't let the strong man boast in his power. I'm so strong and mighty. I don't need any help. God does not want us to boast in that either. Don't let the rich man boast about all the money he has. God doesn't want us to be comfortable with a whole lot of money, right? Money isn't going to save us. But he said, let the one who boasts boast about this that he understands me, that he knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness in the earth. In these things, I delight. Three things the Lord mentioned there. He loves to be loving and kind, He loves justice and he loves righteousness. He likes to make sure that people are getting what they deserve. Good, bad, and all that we need to live our best life in him. All right, so we are rejoicing in this God. What can, let's let's real quick just say out loud, God, I rejoice in this. What do you want to rejoice in about our God? He's faithful. What else can we rejoice in? His love. His love. Yes. What else? He is just. He's in control. We heard that. He reigns. (laughs) What else? I love that he takes care of orphans and widows. I'm going to show you some pictures. I got to go to Africa this last January with Pastor Randy from this church. And and he has a ministry called Love for Kenya. And he took us to an orphanage called Shangalia, which means rejoice. And this, his whole ministry there, take care of orphans and widows. And this is part of being just. We are unjust if we don't take care of orphans and widows. Now, a widow is a woman whose husband has died, but a widow is also a mom whose husband never stayed with her. A widow might be a mom who has no daddy around to help her. And so can you, do you guys have any neighbors or friends who only have a mom in the house and not a daddy? Yep, God wants our eyes and ears and hearts open to those mamas, because they need support and help, yes? Malachi. Malachi, I love that you even know the name. That's precious. And an orphan is a kid who doesn't have a mommy or a daddy. Do you know that about 12 years ago, when we had moved here, uh, it was 9 p.m., and there was a knock at my door, and at my door was a young man who had a pierced eyebrow and a tattoo up his arm and a pierced lip, and he was selling vacuums. Well, this is how God works. My vacuum had really just stopped working maybe a week before he knocked on the door. And, and he looked very interesting to me, so I'm like, come in. My husband will be home in about 30 minutes. Can I feed you donuts or something? <laughs> and so he sat on my couch in my living room, and I said, tell me your story. Why are you selling vacuums? And he said, my name is Justin. I grew up in Bogota, Colombia until I was four. I had no mother or father. I was on the streets and I would run drugs back and forth for bad people. And if they didn't like what I was doing, they'd burn me with cigarettes. And he had scars up those arms. That's why he had some of the tattoos to try and cover the scars. And he said when he was about five, he got adopted by a lovely family here in Minnesota, a mom and a dad, and they had already adopted six other kids, and they had five of their own, so 11 children. And one year after he was adopted, the dad had a heart attack and died. So now there's a mom with 11 children in her house. And so uh, it was a very hard time, he said. He felt forgotten, and so when he got to be a teenager... He ran away, and he said, basically, I'm an orphan trying to make ends meet. I said, Justin, in all that crazy living, did anyone ever tell you that they love you? And he said, 
No. I said, well, you're on my couch so that I can tell you there's a God who loves you and I love you. And if you ever need a home where somebody can be a mom or a dad to you, you're welcome here. So we bought the vacuum and he disappeared for three months and then he called and he said, can I take you up on your offer? And he lived with us for six months while we helped him overcome some unhealthy habits. He was an orphan. On, on the slides, if you go back one, you can see pictures, not very well, but the top corner, that's some of the girls at this orphanage. They didn't have moms or daddies, but they were taken into this home where they have a house mother who teaches them to sing and pray. And then below that, where there's like a blue fence, there's a bunch of kids holding spray or coke. And this is a school in the middle of a very poor section of Kenya called the, the slums. And these are children who don't have moms or dads who come to school and they get at least one good meal a day and they get to shower. And when we were visiting, we thought it would be an extra special treat to buy each of them a cold Coke and they were so excited. In the middle is, you can't see it very well, but it's, it's a stream filled with trash and mud and, and the houses are just pieces of metal and cardboard and that's part of the homes that some of the kids were living in. And then in the very bottom right corner there's a whole bunch of kids around a white man those are more orphans and uh, he was tying up balloons for them and they all wanted to be as close as they could to watch him tie balloons and that top is a bedroom in the orphanage and everything you see in that bedroom is what the kids own do you see a lot in that bedroom there's about eight pairs of shoes nice beds and you can't see very well, over the beds are mosquito nets and that's actually a very wonderful gift. And then just to the side that you can't see in the picture are suitcases, three suitcases that have about eight outfits and that's all these kids have. But they are some of the happiest kids you could ever meet. But those are orphans and part of being just in an unjust or unjust world is taking care of orphans. Next slide, please. These were people, we were doing prayer walking on the streets in Africa, and we would just kind of zigzag back and forth as we felt the Spirit was leading us, and we, we went and talked to a person selling bananas, and we went and, and talked to a man selling coffee beans, and as we were walking, we almost didn't see this group. They were tucked off to the side, and I heard one of the mamas say, what about us? And when we looked, I'm like, what about them? We went over to talk to them, and each of these precious faces is a person with a disability. One of the children was blind. The little boy in the um, army sweatshirt could not talk at all. Um, the little girl in the very bottom is completely paralyzed. Um, the woman in the middle was deaf, but we could sign language with her. And the woman in the very top, kind of to the side, she just maybe had something that made her a little bit slower in everything, in her ability to think and talk, but, but she could talk to us. And we laid our hands on each one of them and we took pictures of them. They had never seen themselves before. And then we showed them the pictures and said, you are fearfully wonderfully made, you are beautiful and precious in God's sight and your life matters. And what was so lovely about this group is that there was a man who was a tailor. Anyone know what a tailor is? It's a man who fixes clothes. Like he would sew skirts for the women and repair tears in shirts and he had seen that in his community, there was no special place for people with disability. And he opened up his shop and said, one day a week I want you to come here and be right in the middle of the community so people can see you and you can see them and people can see that you're just as important as anyone else. And any extra money I make repairing clothes will take care of you. So he was getting them extra food and drink when they needed it. So that in the Bible is what the Lord would call those who are weak or oppressed, the least of these. And justice is having an eye and a heart that sees these kinds of people, celebrates them, and not only that, thinks about how can I help them be a part of my life and a part of God's church life more and more. 
All right, next slide. Now, these are widows. These are the women who lost their husbands and sometimes lost their grown children and have lots of extra children to take care of. And usually they have just a dirt house to live in and not enough food to feed their big families. The woman in the top, white with two white doors, that was a new bathroom we made her. One side is a shower and one side is a bathroom. Um, the woman in the yellow dress, you can't see very well, but behind her, we built her a house. She had been living kind of in just a, um, almost a cave that was crumbling around her. So we built her a house. And then the women on, with the thing on her head, that's how these widows carried things. Do you all think you could carry a whole 50-pound sack of flour on your head? One day, we gave all of the widows mattresses and food. And they carried mattresses balanced on their head with the food on top of the mattress and walked down that road. <laughs> Pretty amazing, isn't it? So I have, I think, two clips of the widows. The woman in the black, you're going to see what her bathroom used to look like. So she's walking toward her bathroom. Do you guys have a bathroom that looks like that? <laughs> Are you glad you don't have a bathroom that looks like that? Yeah, it had a hole that was getting bigger and bigger. And guess what? This widow is blind. So not only is she walking on a dusty path to this rusted out shelter that's called a bathroom, but she had to somehow walk so carefully that she did not fall into a hole that was 60 feet deep. <laughs> so that is why we built her a new bathroom and shower. And it even has a wall all the way for her to put her hand on that guides her to the right place. So that's thinking not only of a widow, but somebody who was blind and couldn't see as easily as the rest of us, right? And then one more video. These are the widows singing. So that was one thing that they were extra, extra good at, rejoicing in their God. They would gather and there were 150 that would come one day a week and get their food and sometimes they would all bring what little money they had and put it in a big basket and then they would pray who needs the money most this week and then they'd give that little bit of money that they had to one of the widows who needed it to survive beautiful we were just seeing god's justice all over the place in this all right do i have any other? oh yes so now we have one more um video that i'm going to show you all and you tell me where you see justice in this video okay Pick up a broken comb Running through my thin gray hair Though I don't have any plans tonight I'm not going anywhere Well, I should have seen this coming Don't know why I'm surprised When the best of us steps up our nation stands a little taller. We all play for Canada. What did you all notice about that one boy? Yes. Yes, first he gave him the basketball to like kind of invite him to come play, right? But here is a boy in a wheelchair. How is he going to play basketball with a bunch of boys that have legs that work? What did they do to make it fair or just? They all got themselves on wheels, all kinds of wheels, right? Somebody was in a wagon, somebody maybe was on roller skates. I thought that was so creative and beautiful. So we looked at God and we rejoiced in his characteristics of being just and righteous. We're gonna real quick look at us so that we can repent. Where do you think we are unjust? How do we get it wrong in this life? How do we mistreat people or not treat them fairly? Where do you see things that are unjust in our world? It's 
good for us to think about. It can even start in your own house, right? Like let's say that you received um, a whole bunch of your favorite candy and you decide that you're only going to keep it for yourself. But you have a brother and a sister that like that candy too. What would be the, the most just thing to do? <laughs> Share it, right? Do you know my husband, Aaron, has brown skin? And two things I can tell you where we saw some injustice. He was actually leading a group of high school students from this church in our neighborhood to um, sell coupons to go on a mission trip. Good thing, right? Well, so he's just slowly following all of these high school students, and somebody in our neighborhood said, oh, there is a man with brown skin following a bunch of students. I'm going to call the police on him. So the police came <laughs> and said to my husband, why are you following students in this neighborhood? And my husband said, because I'm the youth pastor and we are doing a fundraiser for a mission trip. Now, it's not all bad. Somebody was concerned that there could have been somebody following the kids, but because he has brown skin, that happens more often than not. We call that injustice. Now, he just two weeks ago pulled into the Holiday gas station here in Plymouth, and he pulled into a, a spot right next to a woman who was white in her car, and she looked over, and then she looked at him again, and then she quietly reached and locked her door. And his feelings were hurt again. Now, the Jesus in him says, I can forgive her because she's just scared and doesn't know what she doesn't know. The sin part inside of us wants to say, you meanie, you're doing something wrong. He wanted to roll his window down and go, boo. <laughs> but that wouldn't have been right, right? <laughs> But that's an example sometimes of how people can be mistreated because they look different or sound different or have darker skin. It's happening all over the world. And we need to talk about it as a church because our God is a just God. So will you guys, real quick, we'll just take a moment to repent in this area and then the last thing we do is look at Jesus. I'm gonna get on my knees. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And we agree with you that we get so much wrong in this world in regard to justice. You are just and righteous in all your ways. Yet we sometimes uh, have dishonest scales. We sometimes mistreat people who are not like us. We sometimes are very unfair. We sometimes are very selfish. We do not share when we ought to. We agree with you, Lord, that we do not take care of the poor or the widow or the orphan or the stranger among us the way you want us to. We need your help. And so we repent and we receive your forgiveness today. And we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Last thing that we're gonna do we looked at God to rejoice. We looked at ourselves to repent. We're going to look at Jesus and respond. Can you think of a time in scripture where you see Jesus treating somebody with love? Yes. Who? Zacchaeus. Is that how you are right? He didn't necessarily deserve kind treatment. But because he's made in God's image and he's one of God's children, Jesus chose to love him and that love changed him, didn't it? Love that example. Anyone, anyone know the story of the woman who's called the woman at the well? She was not a Jew. She was a different kind of person from Jesus. And most of the Jews said, her kind of people are bad. We don't associate with them. We don't talk to them. We don't eat with them. We don't spend any time with them. If they're on a path, we walk far the other way. But Jesus sat with her and started to talk to her. And then he said, I can give you water that wells up inside of you and gives you a new life. And she got saved by the love of Jesus Christ. 
We're going to end today with one passage. This is in Philippians chapter 2. If there is any comfort for us in Christ, if we have any comfort in his love, any fellowship in his spirit, any affection and mercy, then fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Have the same love. Be of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done out of your selfishness or your pride. But in lowliness of mind, think of others as better than yourself. Look not only to your interests, but the interests of others, like that boy playing basketball. We want the mind in us that we see in Jesus. He was equal to God, but he did not consider that equality with God. Instead, he made himself have no reputation. He became a slave, and he became like one of us. And in the likeness of a human, he humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death on the cross. Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We want to have the same mind and attitude as Jesus. He was a servant, he was humble, he was loving, and he reached for all people. So let's go ahead and um, close in prayer. All right. So we look to Jesus, and now we want to respond. What do you think Jesus wants you to do in your life today to show that you want to be just? Just and fair and right like God. Father, we just pray right now that, that as you stir in our hearts and minds how you want each of us to respond, you would lay on our hearts very simple and practical things that we can say and do to be more like you. We ask for your help, Jesus, that you give us things to say and do so we are more like you. Help us to put other people first. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you guys are dismissed, does anybody have an idea of what they're going to do to show that they are just and right like God? Anything you can do for a neighbor or a friend or somebody in the city? What can we do? You don't have to answer now. It's something that we should be thinking about every day, right? He has shown us what is most important, but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Yes, Annie? To give someone a hug or say I love you. <gasps> to give a hug or say I love you goes a long, long way. That's a great answer. All right, well, the Lord bless you all. I went a little over time. I'm, I'm new at this. <laughs> Hope to see you all next week. God bless you.